Forget dragons and demons. Medieval knights had a far stranger enemy lurking in the margins of illuminated manuscripts. The fighting snail. Yes, that slime-trailing gastropod with a house on its back. For centuries, art historians have scratched their heads wondering why these tiny shelled warriors kept cropping up in the fiercest battle scenes alongside noble knights in shining armor. So, buckle up bookworms and history buffs, because today on Spine and Ink, we're cracking the case of the medieval fighting snail. We'll be diving into the dusty tomes, unearthing hidden symbols, and exploring the weird and wonderful world of medieval marginalia to uncover the meaning behind this unlikely duel. Was it a hilarious jab at noble pride? A commentary on the slow but unstoppable march of time? Or something even more bizarre? Join me as we embark on a quest to unlock the secrets of the snail, one slimy trail at a time. The knight readies himself for a strike, drawing back his arm. Clad in the customary armor of the 14th century, he wears a chainmail suit, a belted tunic, and a bucket-style helmet. Positioned in a modest grassy clearing, he raises a shield adorned with a peculiar face. Additionally, he brandishes a club, its bottom grazing a portion of religious text on the aged page of the medieval book that he is depicted on. Even in the ancient pages of old books, knights encounter mortal dangers. The chivalrous adversary in this case is an elusive creature, often lurking within the margins and thrusting noblemen into deadly combat. At times, these creatures seem to hover, engaging knights in mid-air skirmishes. Occasionally, multiple creatures appear. This peculiar medieval phenomenon is known as the fighting snail. Kenneth Clark, a senior lecturer in medieval literature at the University of York in the UK, notes that the depiction of fighting snails in medieval manuscripts has left art historians and book historians perplexed, prompting them to question the meaning behind these peculiar illustrations. Marginalia refers to artworks located in the margins of books. During the Middle Ages, after completing the main text of a manuscript, particularly prestigious ones, might receive an additional embellishment. These adornments took the form of intricate borders, featuring curly foliage, fantastical creatures, and various drawings. Whether added immediately or decades later, these embellishments were no casual effort, often crafted with precious pigments like lapis lazuli or accented with gold highlights. Clark mentions that these books were extremely costly, catering to a very limited readership. These decorative editions are present in a diverse range of religious texts, encompassing psalters for songs, books of hours for prayers, breviaries for daily prayers, pontificals for rituals by bishops, and decretals, papal letters. They could take on bizarre, playful, grotesque, or even rude forms, featuring bare bottoms, references to medical conditions, and surprisingly, a notable presence of bloodthirsty rabbits on the pages of otherwise solemn devotional texts. Frequently, marginalia appear to have little thematic connection to the adjacent text. During a short-lived phase in the late 13th century, illuminators, responsible for embellishing books, across Europe developed a peculiar fascination with depicting fighting snails. Art historian Lillian Randall conducted an extensive study identifying 70 instances in 29 different books, primarily from the period between 1290 and 1310. These illustrations were not limited to a specific region in Europe, but were notably prevalent in France, where a flourishing manuscript production industry existed at the time, as noted by Clark. The scenarios involving warring snails displayed diverse situations, yet they generally adhered to a common theme of a snail engaging in combat with a knight. Frequently, the snails are portrayed with their upper tentacles, or omatophores, pointed forward in an aggressive manner, resembling swords. Additionally, some illustrations deviate from the typical snail portrayal, depicting hybrid forms that combine snails with human features, and in a whimsical twist, these hybrids are sometimes mounted by rabbits. 
Over time, the phenomenon of warring snails extended beyond illuminated manuscripts and made its way into other realms of the medieval world, including cathedrals. These snail depictions were carved into facades or, in a unique instance, concealed behind a type of folding seat. The question arises, what was the purpose behind their presence? The snail knight fight is an example of the world turned upside down, a broader phenomenon that produced a lot of different medieval images, says Marion Bleak, a professor of medieval art at the University of Chicago. The basic idea is the overturning of existing or expected hierarchies. It is supposed to be surprising and even funny. I think we get that implicitly today, she says. Yet, delving into deeper symbolic meanings behind these drawings remains uncertain. Bleak notes the contradiction where knights, traditionally portrayed as brave and formidable, appear fearful or even defeated by snails. The interpretations vary widely, with suggestions including representations of class struggle or resurrection. One prevailing theory proposes that the snail knight encounters symbolize cowardice, possibly serving as satirical additions to religious texts. Lillian Randall observed scenes where knights kneel in prayer before their slimy adversaries, or women plead with them to avoid engaging the deadly foe. Expanding on the notion of the timid knight, Randall speculated that the snail motif might convey political commentary, possibly targeting the Lombards, a Germanic people who ruled the Lombard kingdom in present-day Italy until the late 8th century. Clark is skeptical of this interpretation due to the widespread occurrence of snail wars in medieval books. Bleak suggests that historians today are less inclined to ascribe narrow meanings to marginal images and emphasizes the need to consider the visual representation, form and context to discern specific meanings. Regardless of the accuracy of Randall's theories, Bleeker believes these images provide valuable insights into how medieval society perceived masculinity. She contends that the idealized version of the brave strong knight is undermined by the snail fights, illustrating that gender has always been a contested and dynamic concept rather than a stable and secure one. Will we ever unlock the secrets of the fighting snail? Will we decipher the silent duel between knight and mollusk etched in the margins of ancient tales? Perhaps not. But therein lies the captivating allure. For within the enigma, an echo of a world long gone whispers. A world where snails could be formidable foes and manuscripts held battles stranger than any dragon's fire. The mystery endures, a portal to an imagination unbound by the known, inviting us to step into the parchment and dance with the snail, one enigmatic stroke at a time. From top sellers to hidden gems, Spine and Ink serves up all things bookish. Like, comment, and subscribe to discover your next page turner.